Lipton was born in the late 1840s in Glasgow and his parents were called Thomas and Francis and they came from County Monaghan in Ireland. And then when he was a teenager, he got a job as a cabin boy, but then he was sacked. And then after that, he decided that he would just take the opportunity. He had nothing to hold him back here. He used what savings he had and he went to America when he was only 20. And he arrives and there is a, a new kind of store that's been created there by an Irishman. And he employs Lipton to work for him. And Lipton hadn't ever seen anything like this before. The shops at home were pretty dull. It's not bright at all, but here was a store where everyone working in the in the store was you know, immaculately dressed. The place was beautifully lit, big gas lamps. And then he had this idea that he would go home and he would try and set up something himself. So he comes back, um, he's got about a hundred pounds, which is a lot of money. Uh, in 1870 and tells his parents that he's going to set up his own shop. And he does that in uh, Stob Cross Street. And Lipton opened his first shop there. So Lipton's store was opened in 1871. And at that time in Scotland, the average wage of people would have been 70 to 80 pounds a year. And so things like butter, milk, cheese, ham, dairy, other dairy products, were quite expensive. So what, what Lipton did was he would go down to the, the quay and he would buy up fresh produce from the, the boats that came in from Ireland. And then he'd take it up to the shop and he would sell it much cheaper than it would have been anywhere else. And he had his shop trying to be like in New York, had his shop brightly lit. He wore a white apron himself. So he then opened shops in the high street uh, in Glasgow and then in Paisley, he opened a street a shop in Jamaica Street. And in each case, everything beautifully presented, cheaper produce, dairy products that were affordable. By late 1880s, early 1890s, he's maybe 150 or so stores, maybe more across the UK by that time. Lipton is a very, very wealthy man. He is very successful. So he went to what was then called Salon around about 1890. Now, Salon had been a place that was full of coffee. And then in 1878, there was this terrible blight or something just destroyed the coffee crop completely. Lipton seized the opportunity to go to Salon where the land is cheap and he buys about 3,000 acres or so of tea plantations. And his whole kind of ethos is he wants to cut out the middleman. He wants to pass on the saving to his customer and by, ext by extending that, also creating his own brand of tea. In 1897, at the time of the Queen's Jubilee again, the princess wrote a letter to the Times saying that she wanted to hold a dinner for all the homeless people in London and that they needed about £30,000 to be able to do it. And then it becomes very clear that nobody's going to give the money. They only get about £5,000. And then out of nowhere, all of a sudden, there's this anonymous donation of £25,000. And then Lipton, not very subtly, drops some hints. As a consequence of that, um, he gets to know the Prince of Wales and the Prince persuades him to mount a challenge on behalf of Britain for the America's Cup. He does and he funds it all himself. His yacht is called Shamrock. He challenged five times and he never won the America's Cup. Every time he's beaten, he is extremely uh, gracious and kind towards his hosts. Says, well, the better team won, I'll come back next time. And the Americans loved him and they bought his tea. So after the war, everything's changed. His time has passed, but he's slow to recognize it. So the business was sold in 1928. He was still determined to have another go at the America's Cup. So this was his fifth attempt. He lost heavily and says that he'll be back. And um, in 1930, at one of the universities in New York, uh, Columbia, I think, they held this special dinner 
and they create a top table. And at the top table are Thomas Edison. You've got Henry Ford. And also at the top table, you've got Lipton, whom they regarded as one of the great pioneers of American industry. But he died in 1931, having built up this extraordinary chain of hundreds, hundreds of grocery stores. He was one of the world's first global entrepreneurs.